So this is the uh, art area. And um, as I said before, children are all born naturally creative. It's just that uh, somewhere along the line, adults teach the creativity out of them by trying to make them think like adults. Um, so an example of that might be um, if you gave your child a choice of every color and a blank sheet of paper, and they decided they're going to draw a scene with the sun in it, and they made the sun purple. Um, for an awful lot of parents and way too many teachers, that would bother them. And so they would um, say, now, Susie, what color's the sun? And they want Susie to make a yellow sun. So um, that is just stifling to creativity. So um, what we do is we actually teach the children about the great artists. So we'll learn about uh, Monet and Van Gogh who have famous paintings with purple suns and or suns of any color. And um, they used all these different amazing colors. And maybe that's the way the light looked to them at that moment. Or maybe that's just the way they felt that day. And so it just makes it okay for the children then to be creative in their art because they all want to be. So we lay the materials out and they will uh, interact with them. So given the medium of paint, we might use roll-on deodorant bottles, ketchup squeezers, feather dusters. Uh, we paint with uh, balloons. We paint with ball moss, horseshoes. Uh, we paint with anything that you can think of, you know, sticks and everything. I know I grew up thinking uh, if you see paint, well, where's the brush? Because how else can you paint? Uh, or maybe once a year you get lucky and get to finger paint. Um, but these children, they uh, realize that given the medium of paint, you can do all kinds of things. We make prints with all kinds of uh, vegetables and fruits. Um, over here, we have an example of... Um, where we will put in a box a uh, sheet of paper and then with a spoon we'll dip um, either golf balls or marbles um, or tennis balls in paint and then put the, the painted ball in there and roll it all back and forth on here to make all kinds of fun um, art. And um, here would be a, an example of that. With this Actually, this was made with a tool, but it would be similar, something like that, where they're rolling all around and uh, very creative. So um, we, uh, we also use every other medium. We use uh, paste and uh, glue and make collages. We use uh, charcoal and colored sand and um, just about anything that you can think of. We cook strands of spaghetti and we paint with the strands of spaghetti or we paint with shoe strings. We paint with spatulas and, and uh, mashers and all kinds of things because they make real neat designs. Um, it's just very um, open-ended and creative. Um, so it's, it's uh, also very interesting that when you see, when you um, just foster their creativity through the art room, how it shows up in all the different areas of the school. Um, we are told all the time that uh, first, second, third grade teachers love getting our ACORN children because they are so creative and they're so good at problem solving and thinking outside the box. And this is how that is fostered. Um, they're going to figure out how to solve cancer, not by going down Main Street. Everybody's tried doing all the Main Street and most of the access roads. It's going to be somebody coming from left field or right field or something um, that has just thought of a whole new creative way to solve it. And it starts with um, having, uh, just fostering that creativity with your young children. Um, so um, we... Uh, uh, I have an example. We went and observed at a, a school one time, and uh, the teacher held up a yellow circle and said, What's this, boys and girls? The sun. No. A yellow ball. No. You know, a, lot, a whole lot of good answers. And th this is the center of a flower. So, and then she had the, put, put it in a flower, and she had the petals all cut out and all this kind of, so the, the child, you know, the teacher essentially puts together this flower for the children. Isn't, that's not art. That's barely even following the direction kind of an activity. Um, so, but it's, they're going to shut down that class because when you have one answer in mind for something like that, um, you're, you're just stifling their creativity. So um, what you can do is when you, when you do that and hold up the yellow circle, say, the sun, great idea. What else could it be? A yellow ball, great idea. What else could it be? Oh, wow, look at that. And they keep coming up. That just, that's uh, brainstorming. 
and high level thinking. So that's what you want to foster. You want to get them thinking all those positive things that they can do. Um, all the ideas that they think could come from that. So um, anyway, um, we encourage parents to also stay away from uh, the question when they see their child's art, what is it? Because it doesn't have to be anything. It can just be a design that they had fun making. You know, this, this is not something, and most parents wouldn't ask what it is, but some things it looks like they maybe, I've, ha I've heard a child, uh, I've seen a child spend maybe 20 minutes on a piece of art, and they had this whole adventure behind it. They climbed up this mountain and they found a glacier and they slid down the backside and they found a waterfall and they turned over some rocks and found some crayfish and then they went around and they did and this whole adventure is on this piece of paper but it doesn't look like anything to us. So if you ask the question tell me about your uh, drawing then they might tell you that whole adventure much more open-ended. But what is it is just kind of a shutdown kind of a question in a lot of cases. So um, now um, with the older children, we do learn about those famous artists just like uh, Monet and Van Gogh that I talked about. Um, we will learn about Michelangelo and when he laid on his back and painted the Sistine Chapel for years, we have all these great art books that uh, show uh, parts of the Sistine Chapel and all the wonderful people from the Bible that are there and um, how, what it would be like to lay on your back and paint. So what we do with the children is um, we will um, take, put some paper on the underside of the table and uh, put a uh, quilt for them to lay on there and give them some uh, paint that's a little bit extra thick so it's not going to drip and they lay on their back under this table and they paint up there just like Michelangelo did. And so they will always remember that because they did it. They just didn't hear about it. They did it. And most of them are going to remember Michelangelo's name. But uh, those that don't, they'll always remember that guy that laid on his back and painted the top of a cathedral because they did it themselves. We do Jackson Pollock painting. This right here, this piece was made by Acorn Children. Now, I'm telling you, that could pass for a Jackson Pollock, and I think it's better than an awful lot of Jackson Pollocks that I've seen. Um, we go out in the, on the lawn out there, and um, we dress the children up in garbage bags and shower caps, and then we, in an orderly fashion, pass the paint around, and they sling it at the, uh, at the thing. And so look at that. Isn't that just incredible? And they learned about Jackson Pollock. We had a child one time that went to the doctor, and uh, the doctor said, oh, you know, mouth open, looking down in there. Doctor said, oh, I'm sorry. It looks like somebody splattered paint on your throat. And she thought for a second, this little uh, four-year-old girl, and she said, you mean like Jackson Pollock? And the, and the doctor goes, whoa, where did this child ever hear Jackson Pollock? Um, so it's very interesting. We go to art museums. Of course, we're, we're, uh, it's great that we have so many wonderful art museums here in San Antonio and uh, learn about all those kinds of things.